asthma. Mm -hmm. uh, it can worsen your, but it's, a, it's more taxing on your body. You're, there's, there's, you're building another human being there. Um, so people can have worsening mm -hmm. of their asthma. It is very important to maintain your medications. A lot of people don't want to take medications when mm -hmm. they're pregnant, uh, but the risk of not is mm -hmm. more dangerous to you and your baby than, than taking them. So it is safe for the pregnant women to take those inhalers which a uh, doctor prescribed? Absolutely. Brings asthma. Bronco spasm, <laughs> spasm yeah. of, of the airways. Uh, mucus can be produced. Uh, you know, w how does it happen? We don't really know. We don't know what the cause is. There's triggers. Um, pollens can trigger it. Dogs, animals can trigger it. Um, but uh, but it's, it's constriction of the airways and then they can't breathe. I, I think I've seen a lot of people, like children are getting this uh, uh, attacks which are very life-threatening. And, yes. And what happened, the cold air can actually mm -hmm. bring asthma. Uh, as uh, uh, the audience knows that what happened in the in our airways, they, there are muscles in our airways. Uh, there are pipes, and the, with the cold air, with the even with the stress, the those pipes become tight. And when they are tight, they are actually really people are um, having hard time breathing. So I think uh, just to in a simple words. Uh, the, if we have a tight airways, the breathing is difficult and as Amy said that you will have cough, one can have breathing problems like wheezing and a lot of mucus will be there mm -hmm. uh, and that, that precipitate even more, more symptoms uh, of increased shortness of breath. Uh, you, you think that it is, is it more common in a specific gender or it's uh I think it's across the board and if you look at numbers um, it is more common in, in boys than girls but it's more common in women as you get older oh. um, but it's 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 across the board it has anything to do with age uh, you, you usually do get it when you are, are younger you'll start to have oh. the symptoms but you can get it at any age so at, uh, maybe we can tell the audience that have, if they are having pet and they get the symptoms, uh, or, or, you know, if they, they maybe they are allergic to pe pets, uh, right? They're uh, they're you know like um, they have to be very careful, right? Um, I mean, asthma can be just you know the, we really don't know the triggers, mm -hmm. but you could have an underlying asthma that's only triggered by a pollen, by an allergen, mm -hmm. and if you get to, unfortunately once you find out if you get rid of that pet or that allergen, the symptoms do go away. Absolutely. So we have to be really careful. Right. And uh, w w what do you think that uh, 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 if a person is having a first time symptoms, um, should they just go and look for over the counter or what would you advise people yeah. to do that? Don't use over the counter. <laughs> Uh, I advise people to call their doctor. Um, there is a test we, most people can do in their office to determine is this asthma or is it something else. Um, there's very good treatment now, very safe treatment, both rescue and um, maintenance therapy if needed. So definitely call your doctor. Do not treat over the counter. So as Amy said, definitely call your doctor and just uh, follow the advice as, as you know, maybe it was asthma, maybe it is something else. So we have certain tests which we do. We call it pulmonary function test or the other name is pyrometry. So that way they, they actually can be done in the offices. So th that way they will find out whether you really do have asthma or you do have some other kind of disease. Uh, so talking to your doctor is very, very important. Yes. Uh, any, anything which can help the people who have asthma and diagnose with asthma, um, anything which can reduce the risk of getting asthma? The risk of getting an attack? Attack, attack. Okay. Uh, obviously avoiding your allergens, avoiding the triggers, avoiding smoke or cold. Um, if they, a lot of people just have an asthma attack or bronchospasm when they go out in the cold, wearing a scarf over their face or avoiding the cold in general. Um, if they are on inhalers, using their rescue inhaler prior to exercise. Y just finding what is their trigger and, and how they can avoid it. I think this, uh, this is a very important point we just mentioned and I want to 
actually reiterate again one more time that uh, if you are going for exercise and sometimes this asthma is actually exercise induced, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to be ready for that. Have the inhaler in the pocket and uh, yes. uh, before it get worsen. Yes. Uh, so uh, is the weight has anything to do with it? Yeah, the people that are overweight, people with asthma, oh, I don't know how to put it. <laughs> <laughs> More people that are overweight have asthma than that mm -hmm. are not overweight. So it means weight does have it an does have an impact. It. Yes. So it may be uh, our body habit is such that it may be um, our lungs are on 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 a smaller proportion mm -hmm. compared to our so big what we body, need, right. body habit. Is that right. might be a reason? Yep. And you know, people that have asthma then are worried about exercise. Uh, you know, am I going to have an attack? And and they do have to be cautious. And like you said, carry their inhaler. Um, but they need to exercise. Do it at lower impact. Do it. Um, Build it up, do a nice warm up. Don't just go in and try and run a marathon because they will probably won't be successful. So uh, cold air, mm -hmm. uh, we have discussed. We have discussed the overweight and also stress related mm -hmm. and pets. Yeah. So we do uh, sometimes. Uh, we don't know what the causes are, but some at times we find out what the causes are. Mm -hmm. So if you find out what the causes are, then please. Uh, uh, work around uh, work around it if you are you have noticed that going out in cold air is bringing the attack so you have to avoid it if you think pets are doing it their hair the cats and the dog you have to avoid that if you think stress related sometime if this you are under stress and you are thinking that it's bringing the um, attack so you have to you have to address your stress mm -hmm. So how about um, any, any pain medications which, uh, which can also uh, um, precipitate the asthma attack? So uh, aspirin and, and anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, Motrin, a lot of people have a sensitivity to them or an allergy to them. So if you find yourself after taking medication like that, that some of your symptoms worsen, you may have that sensitivity and you can check with your doctor. Okay, that's a very, very important point. Like aspirin is so simple. Mm -hmm. Everybody takes it yep. and people don't realize that this can be a problematic. Yep. So I think it's very, very important to to actually keep an eye on your medication list. Absolutely. Um, is uh, pregnancy has anything to do with asthma? Well, if you already have asthma, mm -hmm. uh, it can worsen your body. It's, it's more taxing on your body. You're, there's, there's, you're building another human being there. Um, so people can have worsening mm -hmm. of their asthma. It is very important to maintain your medications. A lot of people don't want to take medications when mm -hmm. they're pregnant, um, but the risk of not is mm -hmm. more dangerous to you and your baby than, than taking them. So it is safe for the pregnant women to take those inhalers which uh, doctor prescribed? Absolutely. Okay, so I think that's very important <coughs> point for the audience to know that. Uh, talk to your doctor again and uh, see that if the pregnancy um, is safe, the inhaler which you are using is safe, but uh, please make sure that uh, you, are, you are getting appropriate treatment during your pregnancy. Yes. So anything else you want to add uh, to the um, asthma um, medication? What kind of inhalers mm -hmm. we, we should be using? There are different type of inhalers. Yep. So there's, um, there's pills and there's inhalers. Um, sometimes people, especially young kids, especially if it's exercise induced, they can get away with just an oral medication. Oh. Um, and then a rescue inhaler. Everybody that's diagnosed with asthma has to have a rescue inhaler. You encourage them not to use it. It's mm -hmm. If they're using it, it's the rules of two. If you use it more than two times, two puffs more than two times a week, or you go through more than two inhalers a year, your asthma is not under control. Mm. Um, so you, you give it to them, but you make sure they're not refilling it over and over again. If you find yourself filling it monthly, you gotta bring them in and talk to them. Um, and then there's your inhaled steroids, which many people do need for maintenance. Um, they're not very systemically absorbed. So as we said before with pregnancy, they are safe. Um, but you hope that again, they don't need those forever mm -hmm. either. So. so going back to your inhaler, certain inhalers, they, 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 they actually make the pipes bigger, mm -hmm. right? So they are, we have to have that all the time. Correct, in those our are maintenance. Pocket because they're a quick fix, they yep. can, they can actually make our air pipe bigger mm -hmm. and we breathe better. 
Then certain types of inhaler, as you said, are steroids. <coughs> it reduces the inflammation. Right. The asthma actually is an inflammatory process. Our, our, um, our pipe are gets like inflamed, sore in other words. So we have to reduce the soreness or inflammation. So steroids does reduce the inflammation, as Amy said. We have to, if we are using those, um, uh, we call it bronchodilators, they, they dilate, they make the pipes bigger. If we are using those inhalers very frequently, it means that we have to reduce the inflammation with another medication, and that can be steroids. Uh, that can be another inhaler we call ipratropium. That can be actually also reduce the uh, inflammatory cells and that also reduce uh, the, the that makes uh, when we will reduce the inflammation the pipe become bigger mm -hmm. so we have certain medications in our uh, in our access where actually we can reduce the inflammation we can reduce the uh, uh, the swelling of the pipe so that our pipes are bigger and we breathe better and that way we will have less cough Yep. and less wheezing. So we, uh, can you tell uh, the audience that if those inhalers, uh, sometimes we use the inhaler, but we don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. So maybe they, uh, they, can, they can go to the provider and the doctor. And yep. So there's so many inhalers now, so many different devices. Some are the normal um, meter dose inhalers that you see everybody, they shake them and they have to push them and coordinate the breathing. Um, now there's dry powder, uh, some are only once a day, some are twice a day. Um, so there's a lot of options. But if you don't understand your inhaler, you come to your provider. If they're not available, it's a weekend, go to your pharmacist. There's, there's people out there that can help you. But you, you need to take them correctly because if you don't get the, the deposition in your lungs, it's not going to work. So my father was using an in inhaler and he did not know how to use it <laughs> so he will just put pop <laughs> dad this is not the way you should use it yeah. so i think we have to learn the right way so if you are not taking the medicine in it's just staying actually in your mouth Correct. and especially steroids inhaler if you're using steroid inhaler you have to wash you have to rinse your mouth after steroids inhaler because steroids can cause um, a, a mouth uh, fungal infection right. in the mouth. So we have to really rinse it well. Yes. Um.